In this video, we're going to demonstrate how we go about calculating the first of these Fourier coefficients, a sub v. Before we do that, let's just remind ourselves what these summations really represent, because they are infinite sums. What this is saying is that f of t, some periodic signal with period equaling cap t, can be broken out into a sum of terms a sub v plus. Now, this term right here is n equals 1, so it would be a sub 1 cosine of 1 omega naught t plus a sub 2 cosine of 2 omega naught t plus, and continuing on for an infinite number of terms. And again, as we mentioned before, as a practical matter, you add up as many terms as you need for the precision that you're looking for. So continuing on now, we introduce these terms here, which for n equals 1 will have b sub 1 sine of 1 omega naught t plus b2 sine of 2 omega naught t plus and so on. Now, our task at the present is to determine or come up with a way of calculating this a sub v term. And to do that, we look at this term is the only constant term. All of the other terms involve sines or cosines oscillating at integer multiples of the fundamental frequency of our periodic waveform. So whether you'd think of doing it or not, it turns out that a very useful way of doing this, or determining a sub v, is to start by integrating both sides of the function over one period. Doing that now to each of these terms, dt, and similarly here, and here, and for all of them, including here, and here, and for all of the rest of those. And we recognize that for each of these terms involving sinusoids, the integral over one period is going to cause those terms to go to zero, every one of them. The only non-zero term left is this term integrating over, or integrating a sub v dt. So going back now to our compact um, descriptions of these, what we're saying is that we're going to integrate the left-hand side over the period, and we're going to integrate the right-hand side over the period. All of these terms here involve cosines and sines, which when you integrate over the period, go to zero. And we're left with then the integral here on the left is equal to the integral from 0 to t, a sub v dt. Now when you integrate the right-hand side here, you get a sub v times t evaluated at the, at the uh, limits 0 and t, which is equal to a sub v times t. Or this here is equal to a sub v times t. Now we can solve for a sub v by dividing both sides of this equation by t, and we get then that a sub v is equal to 1 over t times the integral from 0 to t of f of t. And there we have the way that we will go about calculating these a sub v terms. But let's look at this just a little more carefully. For some periodic function f of t, if we integrate over the period and divide by t, that is actually calculating the average value of this function. In other words, a sub v is just the average of f of t. And we sometimes refer to that as the dc component. The dc component of f of t.